Greetings, my name is Ryan Nitsch. I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. Joining me here today is Sanjay from IBM. Sanjay, say hi. Hi, my name is Sanjay Doifore. I'm a principal solutions architect with IBM. Right, uh, Sanjay, I've dragged you here to discuss an interesting observation. I'm seeing a lot of my large-scale enterprise customers embark on a journey of migration, and that journey of migration is twofold. It's, it's migration from on-premises to AWS, mm -hmm. but I'm also seeing customers take a, a shift to managed, moving away from doing things themselves to managed op op options. And I want to explore that a little bit in the context of, of IBM and some of the products that you're working with. But before we get to that, I spoke to a few customers and explored why are they moving to AWS? What are customers seeing in terms of the, the value of AWS to their business? And, and this is a couple of things that, that came out of that discussion. So if we have a look at the customers I engaged with, they are moving to AWS because of a few items. One of those is the ability to scale beyond what they can currently do in an on-premises context. I'm not saying they can't scale. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that when you come to AWS, you don't get trapped inside a, a procurement cycle or things. It's, it's a much easier scaling mechanism. It's API driven. You only pay for it when you scale it. Uh, the scaling mechanism is also elastic and customers are looking for a increase in availability and what these three things combined give them is a much higher agility which mm -hmm. is very important to customers when they are in, in a competitive space how do I beat my nearest competitor to market I need to be able to scale beyond what my customers are expecting I need to be elastic and I need to be resilient security AWS you know security is day one so all of the customers that I'm interacting with are seeing security as a critical component uh, to their business. Nowadays, even more so than in the past, cost is becoming a significant factor. How do I continue to do what I'm doing and do it in a much more lean manner? And then of course, the other one that is very interesting to me is customers are very much exploring the AWS service portfolio. You know, those 200 plus AWS native services that are built and designed from the ground up to be scalable, to be elastic, to be secure, and to be resilient. And it fixes the need for customers to sort of solve those challenges on their own. They can take an existing product that is built for that and simply add it into their portfolio. And, and these are some of the reasons why customers have said that they're moving to AWS. However, they're coming from on-premises and mm -hmm. a lot of them are bringing their existing IBM software investments with them. And, and one of those is the DB2 family. Is that something yeah. that you're seeing as well? Yes, that's true. So a lot of our customers on-prem uh, have DB2. Again, in DB2, we, there's a DB2 family. So you have the DB2 database and you also have the DB2 warehouse. So a lot of customers are moving to public clouds like AWS uh, for the reasons that you mentioned, uh, for the scalability, agility, and uh, other things that you mentioned. But they want to move to get that scale because they have put in a lot of investments uh, into developing databases and solutions. So DB2, these is, are not new technologies. These are is, things they've been running for, for de I think, 30 years. Exactly. Is this some of the customers out it, there? Yep, yep. Uh, it's a 30-year-plus database uh, running mission-critical workloads for the largest enterprises in the industry. Uh, it is built and tested to support massive scale. Uh, and it is it can handle multiple workloads. So you, on, on, online transaction processing, uh, warehousing, uh, you name it. So it can handle a massive amount of scale uh, and load. So, so there's a tremendous amount of customer trust in this platform. There's experience running it. They know what they're getting. They are, uh, again, this, these are financial institutions. These are large-scale government organizations. These are highly secure 
entities that have a, a, a trust in the product. Exactly. What and if, like, uh, just quickly, so you mentioned about the skill set, right? So 30 year plus, there's a lot of trust in the product, uh, the way it performs. Uh, it's a known product. They have built the skill sets. They have built libraries. Uh, so they're comfortable working on that and then thinking of moving it uh, to other public clouds. When you bring that investment to AWS, does anything change? Does that skill set translate to a benefit? Do I have to relearn something new about the database on AWS? Or do I just gain that agility through familiarity and, and carry on running? You can carry on learning. You don't need to learn anything because it will work exactly like it is on on-prem uh, onto the cloud. Uh, so that's a major advantage. So you could do a phased approach where you could do migration like a lift and shift to AWS, and then you can think of maybe modernization. Then you can think about uh, how do I use some of the cloud native features. But that's a journey. A lot of our customers, they want to sometimes move it because it's a business critical application, they don't want to pause, right? Uh, so they want to start focusing on moving the workload there focus on the strategic uh, objectives of their projects, uh, but let AWS handle the same. And we'll maybe later on talk about the managed processes, uh, how we can do the managed uh, on AWS. Yeah, we, when a lot of people think about a relational database or a database warehouse, they think about the database engine, they think about the schema, but they lose sight of the the customizations, the business logic that can be embedded into a database solution. And, and that's very true here with DB2. There's a huge amount of uh, database level customizations that if the customer didn't bring this across, they mm -hmm. would have to redo those customizations. What about applications, um, third party, or not just third party, like IBM middleware solutions that our customers are using. If you look at WebSphere as an example, Customers have hundreds, potentially thousands of little customized applications that have touch points with this exact infrastructure. And if they had to move away from DB2, they'd have to solve all of those integration points. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. And like, like the big investment that a corporation has made, they want to take an iterative approach. Uh, so definitely customers want to be familiar with what they have done. Uh, onto a new cloud, right? So, yeah, I see that pattern quite a lot. Okay, so for most of the customers that I work with, it, it's not just a case of I, I want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. I have a very specific goal I'm trying to achieve, and, and maybe moving to AWS is that first step. So that, that migration from uh, on-premises to AWS is, is maybe the most important thing for them to execute in the short term. What does that look like in terms of a lift and shift of a DB2 product to AWS? I, I know for a fact you can take a set of EC2 instances and you can build out EC2. You can then go and deploy the DB2 software that you have on premises in the exact same way that you've installed it on a VM on premises, you can install uh, DB2 yourself onto EC2. Can you reuse the licensing or, or does the licensing change? No, you can use, so you you can do like bring your own license, so you can migrate your license from on-prem to AWS. So that's definitely an option. Right, uh, but at the same time, if you don't have existing licensing or you don't want to repeat that, you can also procure licensing and subscriptions on AWS, I believe directly from AWS Marketplace. Is that's kind of exactly option. true. Right. We've also got a, a new sort of thing that is happening in the industry with a containerized approach. And I typically see this where the customer has other IBM software solutions that interact with DB2 that are containerized. Uh, I'm thinking the likes of uh, Cloud Pack for Data. Uh, cloud Pack cloud, for Data. Uh, yeah. A lot of those Cloud Pack options. Uh, this is an optional extra, so the customer, if they are using DB2, has an option to run on there. And that's running on what? It's OpenShift? That's OpenShift. That's our uh, IBM's Kubernetes orchestration layer. Uh, so customers don't have to manage it. The orchestration is done using OpenShift. Okay, I installation and provisioning, is, is that a complex thing that the customer needs to learn or is it largely packaged up and provided? It's all packaged up. So that was the whole idea of having these cloud packs with 
open shift. So the customers don't have to worry about whether those individual components will work together. Uh, all those integrations between cloud pack components are already built in seamlessly. Okay, so it's a case of I select my cloud pack, I go in and I say I want these features such as Watson AI, for example, and I'll have a checkbox there for I want DB2 or DB2 Warehouse as well, and it'll then deploy and provision it. Exactly. Now, I am seeing a growing trend, and this is not necessarily something new. It's been bubbling up for the last few years, and that is a, a move from doing things myself to having them managed for me. So a SaaS or a managed approach. DB2 Warehouse is currently available as a SaaS offering on AWS. Is that correct? That is correct. So, uh, so customers don't have to worry about like the patching, the, the maintenance of it. AWS and IBM SRE engineers, they work behind the scene uh, to take care of all of those things. Uh, on behalf of the customers. So if there is, for example, an issue, IBM and AWS will work behind the scene, the, the customer service reps, and so you don't really have to worry whether the problem was on the IBM side or AWS. So as far as customer, that's what they get when they go to that managed SaaS offering on AWS. Now, that's not necessarily driven by a lack of skill set. Uh, in, in my experience, that's more customers saying, I want my resources to focus on what's the most important thing to the business. Where do I have the biggest impact in the market with the skill set and the resources I have? Let me hand over the keeping the lights on, the management of things to a, a third party. Right, exactly. And so customers can focus on creating more innovative products, more strategic initiatives, instead of the day-to-day -day managing uh, of, uh, of applications and servers. Is there a growing managed portfolio? Is there more to come that you're aware of? Yes, so there are some plans to move some of the other offerings uh, onto the uh, SaaS version, and we'll soon make more announcements about those. Okay. Uh, when we talk about databases and doing a lift and shift migration, you know, it, it's very easy to talk about the underlying infrastructure components on AWS. It's easy to talk about the database engines, the, the software that you're installing or configuring. We sometimes lose sight of the actual data itself, the schemas, the customized code. What exists in IBM to help customers move the actual data because that has gravity to it? Right. So IBM has a product called Data Stage. So Data Stage is a ETL uh, solution that can help you move data from DB2 to uh, AWS. It can do like to like from DB2 on-prem to DB2 on data where, uh, on AWS. It can also allow you to move from DB2 to some other, uh, op for example, an open source database or an AWS native database. Okay, so this, this could be ongoing ETL as I'd have in my on-premises data fabric approach, or it could be part of a, a migration approach where I'm just simply pulling the data out to, to move it across. It That's could right. Be there's, there's also a large collection of sort of third-party tools over there uh, that are supported, and I suppose if you are doing this migration, uh, bringing in a human being consulting team, something like an IBM consulting services could be a, an option for customers as well. Yep, that's, that's exactly true. Uh, IBM consulting has like multiple uh, AWS certifications and the number of certifications the IBM consulting has been growing and so definitely IBM consulting can help out in this. Right, so for customers who are looking at migrating DB2, IBM investments in a more general sense. There's a couple of things that stand out over here. And that is that there are huge existing investments and, and tangible value of those IBM solutions. And customers have a lot of options. They can lift and shift things, they can modernize approaches, they can reuse their existing licensing, they can purchase through AWS, they can handcraft on top of EC2, or they can take advantage of bundled solutions such as cloud packs deploying on containers, or they could take that next step and explore the potential of having things managed for them via a SaaS or other approach here. There is really a very rich toolbox for customers to achieve what their specific business requirements are. 
and, and it's really exciting to see the benefit for a customer when you combine IBM and AWS. Sanjay, as always, it is a fantastic pleasure having you here. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for the opportunity. I enjoyed this experience. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Thank you.